All right, welcome back, everyone. I am here for Genji Tsuno Yohane, Sunshine in the Mirror, episode 12, the penultimate episode. Last episode, Yohane got kind of depressed, blaming herself for the miasma descending on the town. And trying to give up her magic or something by throwing her wand into the river. Very symbolic. But also silly of her, I guess. And by the end of the episode, as Johanne sort of is getting cheered up by her friends, throwing a little party thing for her, recognising the depression in her, and trying to encourage her, Lilaps goes to try and get the wand back, diving into the river, swimming through it, looking and chasing after the wand. And where we left off, Lilaps was seemingly not doing very well, lying on the shore, panting heavily. So, don't know what's going to happen to Lilaps. I think this episode was titled something like Goodbye Lilaps as well, so not a good sign. Yeah, there's that bit in the OP where the two of them are standing together and then Lilaps disappears. Definitely foreshadowing something. I'm sure Lilaps is going to somehow go away by the end of this episode. Whether that be passing away or somehow or other returning to the forest or something. I don't know. A part of me feels like death might be too dark for this show, but also a part of me feels like it's been kind of foreshadowed that Lyaps is going to die <laughs> in many ways. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll also say it wouldn't be unnatural for Lyaps to die. Like, rivers aren't usually that dangerous, especially publicly available ones like that, but it was fairly late at night, and in dog years, Lyaps is probably pretty old by now. Old age and cold water... Not the best combination for animals. Could end up being a death by cold, which is not particularly pleasant. Anyway, let's get into it. Try not to get too depressed by thinking about what might happen. Timer version on YouTube, picture and picture version in the description down below. If you could, if you're watching the picture and picture version, mute this video in a separate tab. More view time helps the channel. Let's go. One goes down oops, and flies out. And there's her depression <laughs> and the butterflies again. Butterflies always seem to appear when the magic is around. kind of already knew that Lilaps got the magic from sorry got the ability to speak from Johanne's magic when they were very young that has been indicated I wonder if we're going to focus on Lilap's backstory rather than focusing primarily on the scene of them potentially passing away on the shore or not doing that. Maybe you will be able to save Lilap's. 
all line will just be fine because it was just diving in a ripper at the end of the day. Yeah, we're getting Aurora Borealis. <laughs> Localized entirely in this city. <laughs> What's with the creepy dark roots coming out of the clouds? Being checked at the hospital it didn't look like a good face on Rika, but okay. It was a cold issue. <laughs> Again, blaming herself. Children. A child looking for pets, I imagine. Pig. <laughs> She's gonna see herself in the child. Seems like Johanna can't really refute the child's self-blame because she feels it herself. <laughs> Become independent. The little ribbon thing. Oh. The, oh dear. Clarity strikes. And now we get the memories to rebuild the confidence, I presume. <laughs> wow, fell down the stairs, silly child. Racing <laughs> feels definitely like the lamps just slowing their pace to match your honey. <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> but I lapse unable to say goodbye when she left. Which I imagine is from loneliness and hurt from being left behind. Oh. 
Lineups is once again <laughs> built. The danger Johanne was in. <laughs> of course, it's secret identity. Maybe you should think about that, Johanna. <laughs> yes, thank you, children, for pointing out the obvious to Johanna with this little parable. Lilaps. Where has Lilaps gone? Why would Lilaps leave? Unless it was to go and help your Annie and she got waylaid along the way. Very dramatic music for this, though. <laughs> Interesting camera rotation. Stroking the carpet. distracting you, honey, from singing out of loneliness. <laughs> Even back then. Interesting sparkling up on the mountain there. comes the magic spell, and how quickly did it take effect? It's a pretty cool visual effect of the magic happening. I was supposed to be heading up the mountain, perhaps to that Tree trunk again. Is that the source of the magic? <laughs> Immediately can talk. <laughs> K 
confirmed. And we see it happening and it's cute. is magic <laughs> or magically enhanced or has she realized that Lilaps is probably lonely and has always been with her I say, I wonder if Lilaps' ability to speak might be tied to the area, but I think it's more likely that loneliness is what's preventing Lilaps from heading out and supporting her. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yes, Lilaps' attempt to keep her hair backfired. And left in the middle of the fight. Then when you came back, everything seemed fine. Are they communicating telepathically? <laughs> Sounds like you are a little bit. So why did you bring her here? <laughs> now we just have a typical, fun, cute conversation despite the serious undertones. The waves out of sync <laughs> might be about to become in sync.
<laughs> the stick, the wand. I mean, <laughs> yes, I agree, but would Lilacs really be alone if Johanna left? <laughs> uh, wave lines are getting closer. <laughs> Classic line that. Change is an inevitability, so you may as well accept it. Connection. Magic. This can clear the miasma completely. Ah, uh, we're going into a musical. Little music video thing. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Oh, it's mirroring the opening with that shot of a night sky. There's the reflection of herself, as she referred to my lapse as. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, and everything's clear now. <laughs> ah, yes, I see now. <laughs> With the very clear. Oh, dear, the magic's broken. <laughs> You know, you can still communicate to some extent through body language. So what is this? We saw a flash of that in the song, in the music video. What is the calamity? <laughs> 
And where is it coming from? Okay, so Lilaps, I guess, is not dying at all. The goodbye is a metaphorical goodbye, because they will no longer be able to communicate verbally. Which is sad, but not unworkable. Yeah. There are plenty of people who get through life without being able to verbally communicate. Yeah, mute people. Or deaf people who are deaf from birth and so never learn to speak. Even in discounting humanity and their ability to communicate via things like sign language. There are lots of people who claim <laughs> that they can understand their pets relatively well based on behavioural tics, I guess you could say. Like dogs with tail lagging is a pretty good sign of happiness. Hmm. Yeah, so it's more or less resolved the issue with lineups, which is in entirely caused by Lilaps's loneliness, which prevented them from supporting Johanny as Johanny was trying to make her way in the world, which in turn caused Johanny to get stuck <laughs> in a in a transitionary phase, essentially. She was at the point where she was transitioning from a young girl into a young, or rather than I guess, an older child into a young adult. Trying to branch out on her own, try new things and explore what she wants to do with her life. And unfortunately for Lilaps, that meant branching out physically as well and leaving. Which caused loneliness to cause... Fighting. Yeah. And I appreciate that Lilaps recognises the effect that her actions had on Johanne. And that they were incorrect and wrong. And it's, it is something that there are parents who do that. Yeah, they always treat their child as a child, no matter how old they grow. You know, people say things like, oh, he'll always be my little baby, or something like that. You know, that phrase on its own isn't, you know, bad, but there are lots of people who say that as sort of like a an excuse to infantilize their adult children and not treat them with the appropriate respect that adults deserve. You know, things like not allowing uh, a child to sleep in the same room as their partner when they stay with the parents. That's the sort of thing which is an indication that they do not respect you as an adult, that they're still thinking of you as a child, one that needs to be kept from the temptation to do bad things. You know, Lilaps was to some extent, moving towards that in her admission of convincing herself that Johanny needed her, you know, that she couldn't leave Johanny alone, despite the fact that she did leave Johanny alone by allowing her, or, oh, well, she couldn't exactly stop Johanny from going to Tokai, but ironically, her trying to discourage it ended up pushing her to do it even more. So, let's actually go through the episode. Start with the staff. And we get bits of... flashback, essentially. You know, mostly rehashing... not rehashing, but... 
restating lines that have already been said before, reinforcing all the ideas that have already been present. Here, things about how well, that's got the ability to speak from Johanny when they were young. It's the big thing there. I really like the visual effect of the Calamity's clouds. You know, we've got these dark looking clouds covering the sky. Obviously the purple miasma creating this purple atmospheric thing. Then we've got these bright green Aurora Borealis-esque uh, lighting effects. And then also these creepy looking tree-like roots coming out of the clouds. You know, on first glance, it looks a bit like black lightning. But then it's fully stationary. And you think, oh, actually, that looks like tree roots. And at the same time as being like tree roots, it's almost like grasping hands, tendrils seeping in from another dimension. Very eldritch horror-y. And also, I find it quite interesting that a number of these trees, like actually on the ground trees, seem to have protrusions coming out of them, reaching towards the sky. Possibly a effect of the miasma. Mm. Yeah, you can see it in all these as well. More trees going up and up. That's got to be deliberate. Mm. Yeah, interesting stuff. Like, I really like the general vibe of the calamity itself. It's got a appropriately... It's not really scary vibe, but it's, like, existentially horrific. <laughs> not horrific. Horrific's not the right... It's existential horror-esque. <laughs> my, my brain turned to the horror into horrific, which is not the correct way to do that. Mm. Oh, everybody's evacuating. Seems semi-reasonable. Lalabs gets treated for the effect of the water, so no issue there. Not a health concern. Run into Charles, who gives us also, I just noticed. Yeah, look at this big creepy root coming out of the ground, reaching towards the sky. It's like they're trying to connect cross between the planes, perhaps. So, run into Child. Child has issue with Pet. They feel Pet has hated them because they did something Pet didn't like. The older sister went to grab Pet and now both in danger. Child blames themselves. And Johan is like, well, this is exactly me, isn't it? I did something to make my Pet slash older sister leave me and go and do something dangerous, and it's my fault. Hmm. Gotta be very careful when you try and take responsibility for somebody else's actions. Ultimately, they're the ones who made the decision to do what they did. That being said, you shouldn't try and dodge responsibility for somebody else's actions. If you, if their actions were an intended effect of your interaction with them, you know, like if you deliberately manipulate somebody into doing something, then, you know, you can see yourself as responsible for that action. But if you act in a way that you feel is natural towards them and then they have a response to that which is not ideal, then that's not entirely on you, regardless of what you did to potentially provoke that response because it wasn't intended. But of course, it's like intent isn't the only thing that matters, yeah? Part of good communication skills is recognizing when things that you say can be misinterpreted or taken the wrong way or taken out of context and you know, basically used as impulse 
or impetus for somebody else to do something specific. Yeah. Reminds me of a story about who is it? I want to say it's Stephen King. Or it might have been Neil Gaiman or someone. But no, I think it was Stephen King. But they had a book written. They read it under a pseudonym. I can't remember what it was called, but it doesn't really matter. It was a fairly violent book about a school shooting. And, you know, there are a lot of school shootings in America which cited that book as potential influence. And initially, the response from the author, which I'm pretty sure was Stephen King, but I might be wrong, was to essentially say, death of the author, you know, I'm not responsible for how people act in response to my book. Generally speaking, these people are going to do that sort of thing anyway, and this book was just... It just happened to be the trigger. It would have been something else else if it wasn't the book. But eventually there were so many things tied to it, he decided to pull publishing on it, stop it getting published. You know, it's probably still available. You can probably still get copies of it or read PDFs online or anything like that. But it's out of print. He decided to do that because he recognised that something in what he had written was acting as that trigger for people more than he was comfortable with. You know, he is not at any way at fault for the shootings which were made or done perhaps as a result of reading that book. You know, that's entirely on the people who did those things, but he recognised the influence that his words could have and thus did his best to mitigate the potential negative consequences of that. And I think that's a good thing to do. It's not, it's, it's the sort of thing where I would say it's something you should do, but not something you have to do. You know, I don't think it's a moral compunction to do that, to self-censor, to reduce other people's potential negative uh, interpretations of your work. But if you recognised significant negative interpretations that are leading to very bad consequences for a lot of people, then it is reasonable to withdraw it or change it or whatever. You know, another example of this is in Pokemon, uh, Jinx was... You know, the original Jinx uh, had black skin, and after the release in England, I think, or America or whatever, English-speaking countries, where racist caricatures, caricatures of black people were common, people pointed out, this is kind of like a racist caricature. And it, it absolutely wasn't intended as such. It was, To me, it's quite clear it was actually intended as a caricature of uh, Gyaru characters with the you know heavy makeup and the you know the idea that it's like language and way of talking so alien was referring to you know the new way of speaking you know the youthful slang of gyarus it's clear to me that that's what was intended but it's very high similarities to racist caricatures in america made it so that it was untenable to maintain that character design and so they changed it so that it would no longer be associated associated with that idea of of racist origin so and that was a very good move <laughs> both like from a business perspective you know you don't want your brand tied to something like that especially when it's you know, Pokemon is primarily a brand aimed at children, and you don't want parents thinking, can't show that to my parents because it has racist things in it. But also from a moral perspective, like, you know, there was no intent, and they kept the original intent with their change. You know, they just changed the skin colour to purple, basically. But it still worked as a still works as a caricature for Gyaru culture. Although, yeah, I would say that that is also not but a particularly nice thing to uh, caricature. Any sort of caricature really is not 
a good thing to have in your media, but it's it was much more acceptable than racist stuff. Which again, there was no intent for racism, and it you know because of that, I would say like it absolutely wasn't racist, but it could so easily be interpreted as racist that getting rid of it was the correct thing to do. Where where did this come from? How did I get onto this topic? Oh yes, things you should do versus things you need to do. And how did that relate to this story? <laughs> yes. Johanne blaming herself for Lilaps' actions. Johanne had no way of knowing how Lilaps would respond to her words. Just as Lilaps had no way of knowing how Johanne would respond to her words. But ultimately the fault lies with the person who behaved that way. That being said, both of them recognise the effect that their words had on the other and reach out and apologise, essentially. And that's good as relationship dynamics go. Right, so after this big weird aside into various <laughs> darker topics, Johanne heads out to go look for the injured party. Slightly overestimating her skills, you know, going out alone. And again, very pretty Aurora Borealis effects. I keep thinking of the steamed ham sketch. <laughs> Finds the kid holding a plant. And the plant is, like, crackling with energy at some point. I'm pretty sure. Where is it? I'm pretty sure there are a couple of bits of, like, crackling black and purple energy or something around the the flower. Yeah, so she pauses and looks down, getting gripped. There's that purple lightning, but I'm pretty sure there was someone on the flower specifically. Forget the flash. The reaction. And then she, like, collapses or something. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Is it around here? Mm. Pretty sure I remember that. Maybe it's my brain being wrong. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Right, the, uh, the flower has significance to the story because it's the other kid's favourite flower, and that's what Sakura was there to get. But I, don't know, I felt like maybe there might have been some link to the calamity in there, if the energy was gathering around it or something. Because there seems to be a very plant-like feeling to some of the effects the calamity is having. So, memories... Gets picked up. Children are returned. And we once again do the... <laughs> Look, this is a metaphor for your relationship with Lilaps in this child's relationship with their pet. They, they don't hate you at all. They really love you. Who would have thought that your family member basically pets actually care about you. So they head off to find Lilaps because Lilaps has disappeared. And then she makes the connection to go up the mountain. After a brief time at home and remembering the magic, how it started. And this piece of animation is very, very pretty. Yeah, we got the hair Ooh, wafting up behind her. Get big spinny cam. Got the slightly rainbow-ified background. Beams of light come in. 
create a ripple effect like they're landing in water. And then that bursts out again with a fairly liquidy feeling, like a splash. But then it curves round and wraps around them. And we get these multicolored orbs around them as well, which come in and wrap round in a in the same pattern as the uh, symbols on the back of the staff. Hmm. Which makes it weird that the like they have that pattern exist already and not be actually tied to the characters who aren't in any way related to Johanny at this point. Except maybe, um, what's her name, Hannah Mado? There was indication that those two knew each other beforehand. But the rest of the cast, who seem to be signified by the dots on the back of the staff, I guess the magic was able to predict their existence. Mm. Which is believable. It's magic. <laughs> Yeah, so Lilap starts talking immediately and is equally as surprised that she can be heard. I'm still unclear if Lilaps was actually able to talk to other people physically or if she just chose not to. I'm going to assume that she wasn't able to because that would make even more sense of her loneliness. Mm. So, works out that she's up on the mountain. Heads up, memories of admitting to Lilaps that she wants to go to Tokai to do singing. And Lilaps slightly talks her down. Is liking something enough? Or other sorts of things like, do you really think you're good enough, essentially? It's not very supportive, as Lilaps correctly identifies. And it was deliberately not supportive. Lilaps was lonely and wanted Johanny to stay. So that they could spend more time together, because... Johanne is the only one who Lilaps can talk to, and it seems that since her job is done in terms of looking after Johanne until she grows up, the magic's gonna break, and that would mean she can't talk to anyone anymore. She would lose the one actually close connection that she has. Mm. But of course, that's not a good reason to hold somebody back, especially somebody that you love and care for. Telepathic communication is, is new, but... <laughs> Again, we can hand wave because magic and emotional impact. And they have the big talk where they express their feelings about each other and apologies about the things that they feel they've done wrong to the other. And Lilaps is finally able to, to some extent, let go. I, it, there's the classic phrase of, if you love them, let them go, which is, I would say, Something which is almost exclusively directed at family. And especially parents. Because it's very easy for parents to, as I said, get into that realm of slightly infantilizing the child, you know, being overly protective. Not treating them as a functioning adult who doesn't need your help anymore. And that, you know, having that overly protective presence can be detrimental to a young adult's development in the world. 
And so parents have to, to some extent, let their children go. Let them go out and <laughs> test themselves in the real world. But I would say, on the flip side to that, other things like friendships, romances, I wouldn't necessarily recommend following that. Yeah, like if you're in a romantic relationship with somebody and say they're yeah, you know, they tell you that they've got a good job offer from like a different country, like halfway around the world. And you're not in a position where you can go with them. Ultimately, the, you know, they have to make that decision for themselves, whether or not they are willing to leave. But I think it's it would be foolish of you to not express concern over the fact that you would be so far apart from them and to express the fact that you may desire them to stay even if you're aware that it might be a very good opportunity for them career-wise because ultimately when you're in a relationship it should be you know the two of you acting as a unit for the most part and if you are unable to do that, then that's not ideal. <laughs> yeah, so. But in Lilaps's case, because it's family, yeah, her love for Johanne is, in a way, holding Johanne back. And that's not what you want for a family relationship. To some extent, you don't really want to have a romantic relationship as well, you know? Like in the example I gave, if the partner who's going off to get the potential career boost gets convinced to stay, rather than making that decision for themselves, if that ends up being a significant detriment to their life, they may end up resenting the other person for it, and you know that could end up ruining the relationship regardless, and then they've lost both the relationship and the job prospects. Bad for everyone. There needs to be some sort of balance. Yeah, you need to be able to talk to people about your concerns and sadness and loneliness. But you also have to be accepting of what their ultimate decision is. Anyway, they then have a song as their wavelengths come together. It's a fine song, pretty decent choreography, some interesting flashes, got all the crystal trees in the background which were present in the opening, and there are a couple other shots which uh, call back to the opening. But there's one shot in particular that I want to look at. I'm not sure if I'll find it just skipping through. If not, yeah, I haven't found it. So I'm going to go back, watch through it so that I can find it. So this is what I wanted to look at. It's just a little brief segment in the song, but this very much makes me think that this is what the calamity is. We've got some sort of swirling vortex with a flower-looking thing in the middle, except with some pretty pointy, spiky bits, like like teeth of a giant maw. And then it's dark roots spreading out and coming down from the sky. <laughs> it looks a lot like the clouds we see. And we get a brief flash of something similar at the end of the episode, which we'll get to. Pretty soon, I think, because I don't think there's much else. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention, I noticed, finally, <laughs> this central thing. It's Johanne, and then with the little small side circle, which is probably meant to be Lilaps, the supporting character. Mm. Yeah, and it almost looks like it even has a little tail and ears. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. 
So, was that it? Yes, just here. Yeah, that's the same thing, isn't it? I'm looking forward to seeing what that is next episode, hopefully. Because <laughs> next episode is the last episode. So if they don't show it there, they're not going to show it. Unless they do a second season of this, which I would be surprised at. It feels like it's going to be a pretty completed story. But, yeah. Really good episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again for the next one. Bye-bye.